you can see the countryside of Nova Scotia in many ways. You can see the color of the earth, the sky, the water, the trees. But uh, that's only looking at it from the point of view of an artist. Before I begin a sketch, I watch the repeating motion of the wave, the overturn and the deep greens, and then in the trough where it pairs down into the more softer greens and the greys and the blues. Now, particularly, I'm looking for more the mood of the sea than just a straightforward uh, marine painting to see these tremendous waves breaking and the, the depth of the greens and green greys coming through. And then all of a sudden a touch of blue sneaking in on the, on the wave tops. Ah, the, the, this is it. This is the joy of the marine painter and the thrill of anyone to watch. I love to walk along the shore and pick up the driftwood, which I use afterward for uh, mounting my gulls. I often watch uh, the seagulls as they fly over land and uh, the forms they, uh, they go through. I try to form a, a rhythm around these, uh, these gulls. And, uh, express myself by carving. I don't know exactly where I started in my uh, symbolism. All I know is that I push myself to develop new forms and uh, new symbols. It's like uh, the mind's rays projecting on matter and creating forms from wax into bronze. I was doing a series of experiments with rhythms and circles. I wanted to do something in wood with a flowing sort of line. Eventually, I sort of with pounding and carving wood, you know, with a mallet, I, so I gradually sort of worked into uh, metal. I really enjoy, you know, cutting and piercing metal and bending it and twisting it and shaping it into sharp points and, and this sort of thing. Portraits, for example, with the flat steel, I would try to uh, 
create a, a three dimension, let's say on a flat surface using steel where the outline of the figures would be wholly, you know, pierced right through. The largest piece that I've worked in this technique is the uh, one at the Miners Museum. I had a, quite an interest in this particular work. Simply, people have no idea, you know, uh, the cramped area and of the miner in his work, you know, in conditions. And it's, it's really quite exciting. You never really see the whole miner, and they're just fragmentary things. You see them just caught by light. And for instance, you see lots of boots down there. You know, there's a fellow lying on his back, and all you see is a boot, you know, sticking out. And so this is what I tried to do in this pierced metal technique, so you would see them in a fragmentary sort of way. Like most painters, my interests are varied, but I've been deeply involved with the older parts of Halifax. The houses, uh, I think, that are of interest to me, at least, were built in the 19th century and the early 20th century. They've stood the test of time pretty well, and they have a certain dignity. The old buildings I've painted are part of the story of this changing city. One of the interesting things for the painter, of course, is being conscious of what is happening. The new structures rising, the effect they have on compositions, changing skyline, the fact that these new shapes combined with the old, I think, state very simply that this is a, an old city. I'd always like to see the country as it was. And I've tried to get this mood of the things before they're gone. And the old houses had a sense of charm. Maybe the time has made them look that way. But they had a nice proportion. They didn't worry about architecture. They just built what they felt. I just feel a lot of the past is slipping by us, and it should be held before it's too late. When the Bay of Fundy Shore was formed about 50 million years ago, the uh, Silica-bearing solutions percolated up through and down through the molten lava, basalt now. As they cooled, they formed in the shape of nodules, in some places long and fairly wide, fairly narrow seams. In the area where Winnie and I gathered these agates, we found uh, more varieties of colors and uh, different designs than any other place that I know of on the continent. Mm -hmm. 
When I magnify the stones, uh, looking for internal fractures, and then select the best stone uh, and design in the stone for Harold to cut, I see the flow of the minerals in solution. And this is what I have sort of tried to do with my paintings. Not too many of the stones suggest realism. Um, more imagery or mystery or something that gives your mind uh, an opportunity to explore further. But I don't always stick to the colors that I see in the stones. I like the colors to play by themselves, just as the minerals had fun frolicking around in that liquid chalcedony. became interested in little bits of landscape and um, concentrating more on that rather than on the big landscape itself. So I feel that when you abstract, you simplify, I'm not interested in copying what I see, but in trying to create a mood. Now I use color um, to give the feel or it's something that's more of an interpretation. Just with your hands alone, you can shape uh, clay in any design, in any shape you like. And if you have an idea, you try to execute it, and uh, if it's pleasing to you, you finish it and glaze it, and. It's, uh, it's very much like a, uh, a person's signature. We've done about 150 different species of mushrooms, and we gathered them in the woods and the fields and different times of the year. We also make a sketch, because we have to be sure of the true colors. A person can get the ideas from uh, uh, shapes of rocks, uh, from shadows, uh, from barks of trees, and all, all sorts of uh, forms.
Winter always reminds me of preserves, or a little bit of summer stored up. And that's exactly what my painting is. It always seems to be trying to express something that I once felt in the summer. Sketching is, is just like taking some kind of a shorthand. It's as though you, you sort of write down the facts of the subject matter, and then you carry it home with you so that you can expand on it and enjoy it over again. I find that my uh, method is more one of destruction rather than construction because it's formed of applying nine layers of paint, possibly maybe ten, and then scraping back to the original layer or to the fifth or the sixth or the seventh until you get these uh, ten different shades popping through in different places to form a vibrating effect. It's, it's a very enjoyable thing for me to do this sort of thing, to, to bang away at it and fight it and always have it shouting back at me. This is a painterly area in the sense that there's all kinds of um, things going on continually. The mountains are continually changing. There's atmosphere rolls down over them and crawls back up and obscures certain sections and they're, they are always sort of becoming and losing themselves again and, and becoming part of sky. And there's no separation between sky, mountains, land, everything just is sort of oneness. My paintings are not realistic. They're not painting the subject matter, they're painting the experience that I have in nature. It's a sort of religious experience that occurs infrequently. It is an experience in myself, but it only occurs when I'm in nature, when I'm completely alone and have no connection with humanity, whatever. There's a real a sort of personal rebirth with this acid green that comes out in the spring. All the juices are flowing in me and in nature. <laughs> 